Hello everyone and welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, my name is Chris. I am a saxophonist based in the Los Angeles area and I am a classic menswear enthusiast if you couldn't already tell by what I am wearing in today's video. If either music performance videos or men's style videos are of interest to you, please feel free, please feel free to subscribe to my channel to be able to enjoy more content in the future. Today's topic is on cheap versus inexpensive suits. Now, I made a cheap versus inexpensive shirts video a few months ago and I apologize that it has been a while since then. I've been busy and I finally just got around to wearing my second inexpensive suit. So you may be wondering, how do you define cheap and inexpensive? Here's the thing, if you look in a dictionary, they'll define it just about the same exact way between cheap and inexpensive. So let me get let me give my definitions of cheap and inexpensive. Cheap clothing or cheap anything is really of low cost and it is going to get pretty shredded pretty quickly. Sometimes sometimes it it's of a low price tag which it reflects or it could be of a higher price tag and it still winds up going through the same process as the much cheaper products. You know who you are, designer brands. Unlike something that is inexpensive, which, is, which still has a similar cost, though it could also be made of higher quality either material or higher quality labor. So that, that means it is going to be at somewhat of an upcharge though at the same time you're going to be getting something that it will likely not fall apart as quickly as as something that is actually cheaply made such as like at a gap an old navy a zara or an h m but here's the thing cheap and inexpensive is still up to you as to what you determine is cheap and what is inexpensive here's the thing you're the one spending the money i'm the one spending my money I don't dictate how you spend your money and you don't dictate how I spend my money. So it's really up to you and it's up to me. It's up to the individual to determine what sort of value something brings. So which suit companies am I going to be comparing today? I'm going to be comparing Men's Warehouse. I'll be comparing Charles Tirrett, the suit you are seeing me wear currently at this very moment, and Spear and McKay. I just want to preface this video with this, just like I prefaced in my other video. I'm not here to, and again, pardon my French, just like in my last video, I'm not here to shit all over Men's Warehouse, um, though I also want to state that if you are interested in quality menswear for a lower price, I would suggest going, uh, avoiding Men's Warehouse and looking somewhere else, such as a Charles Tirrett or a Spear and McKay. There are also plenty of other options, but those are the two I am speaking on today. So without further ado, let's talk about my men's warehouse suits. A uh, little preface, I actually just donated these suits fairly recently, um, and this is because the suits were just a little big on me and I wasn't going to be getting anything out of them, so I thought someone else might be getting some more um, worthwhile time out of those suits. So, um, they were in two colors. It was a bit of a medium gray and a navy suit. <clears throat> Both of them were uh, came out to be at three, around $300 total, not $300 a piece, granted. Um, I know that at the time they were trying to sell, sell them to me at $300 per suit. Um, though, retrospectively looking at it, I am very glad that I did not get those suits for any more than the 300 total, and I will be talking about that in just a second. But, um, so I got those suits in a 42L. Um, obviously, I'm six foot two, so I, I need a taller suit, so the long suit was already um, necessary, but I got it in a 42 in the chest because of two reasons. A, I thought a, I was working out just a little more, and I thought I needed the extra room for performance. I, I'll talk about that a little later. And B, I was working out a little more, so I thought my chest and my shoulders were a little more broad. Um, 
turns out I was horribly mistaken and those suits felt oversized by at, at least in the in the last year or so that I've been wearing those suits so goes goes to show list, listen to the people that take your measurements even if it's at a men's warehouse because because fact of the matter is your suit should be fitting nicely not tightly or loosely for that matter a little bit about the suit of course being from men's warehouse it was it, based on a fused construction, meaning the whole thing um, was glued. So, um, just a little, a little note on, <clears throat> a little note on fused construction, and I'm getting the notes from um, the gentleman's gazette video, and you can also check that out up over here. Uh, fused construction, it is basically once again glued, and unfortunately, it has no character to it. Where, whereas, say, a canvas suit, whether half or full canvas, it actually mo sculpts to your body over time. And I'll talk more about that as I get into my next suits. So it, so it was like there was no character. Um, you could especially see it on the hanger where the lapels are just stupid limp. You can especially see that when I'm wearing the suit. Um, and, and of course, um, the waist could have been more snug um, when I got the suit done, but of course, I'm, I'm gonna have to restate this, that I really didn't know any better back in 2016. All I wanted in 2016 was some new suits. Keep this in mind, everyone, when you're getting a suit wardrobe, you're gonna be learning things over time. You're not gonna know what to do off rip, though I hope my videos and plenty of others' videos out there as well are going to be helpful to those of you who would like to know better about these sorts of things. But for the time I had it, I couldn't complain. It was it, they were those they were my first suits and and they got me through my co early college career. Now moving on through my later college career, I finally get this suit, my Charles Tirrett suit. I purchased this suit as a three-piece uh, just a little over a year ago, so I'm not currently wearing the waistcoat if you can't tell. I got this as a three-piece, got it for around $500 um, in, U in US dollars, it, maybe slightly less, maybe maybe they charge the same in, in pounds sterling, I am not fully aware. But for $500, this was actually a really good investment. It's a half canvas suit, meaning, meaning um, the canvas lines the top half of the suit from the chest down to around the top of my stomach, um, around the button area for that matter. <clears throat> and, and the chest area actually molds around the movements of my body and how I'm moving. So and every time I would decide to wear this suit, it, it's going to continue shaping to my body as I wear it. In addition, the jacket actually closes better on the hanger in particular than the fused construction suits of my men's warehouse suits. You can even see on the hanger that my Charles Tirrett suit closes better than my men's warehouse suits. That is because of the fused construction being a lifeless garment for a fused construction versus a garment that has a little more life when it's when it has canvas. Again, one one is just kind of a panel, the other is a little more. One is a little more lifeful and it uh, follows the shape of your body. And to top it off, the lapels actually snap back. So if I, sh if I show it here, I'm peeling it back. But if I even just lightly touch it, boom, again, boom. On, on a fuse construction, it, it doesn't have such a snapback in, in terms of that. That's because canvassing is in the lapels of the jacket, and that gives it more character, meaning there's even more character to the upper half of the suit, which is actually the most important, being that your chest is the closest to the garment. Now, my only complaint with this suit is that the armholes can be somewhat a little too high at times, like in particular, um, if I were to just kind of sit back and I were to close my jacket, even though I'm sitting down really quickly, um, there's there's a little wrinklage right here um, compared to, well, actually, if I were to just be here, you see a little more wrinklage here than you do over here. 
That's because I, the armhole is just a little high here in my left armhole um, in the B-roll I captured. Um, it's It felt like both armholes just were a little high, but that could have also been incentivized by my waistcoat, um, just kind of adding a little extra room to the suit or around my body before adding the jacket on, I should say. So there's, there's that, but I still prefer to have this suit um, compared to my men's warehouse suits. And if you're not satisfied with your Charles Turret order at, at all, to rehash what I said in my last video, and this, this is the best part of Charles Turret, um, they have a six month guarantee, so no matter how new, how used, um, if you want, if you want to send back um, your order and get and exchange it or just straight up return it, um, you have anywhere between six, anywhere from your purchase date all the way to six months out to send back the product and either get your exchange or your money back. You don't find that from too many companies. Most companies will will offer at most three months, and that's and even that's good because because they want to make sure that their garment comes back a little fresher. Charles Tirrett, they could care, they sound, seems like they care a little less, but they want to ensure that what you get is what you want, regardless of if the if it was really used or not. And lastly, we're going to talk about my navy double-breasted suit that I got from Spear and McKay. Now, before I talk about Spear and McKay, I have to give a big shout out to the man Vladimir Roche for really introducing me to Spear and McKay. And I, now that I own that suit, I properly understand exactly why he and so many others really rave about it. But Vladimir Roche was really the first person who really got me interested in Spear and McKay as a whole. Similar to the Charles Tirrett suit that I'm wearing, it is also of a half canvas construction, though instead of being made out of a super 110 wool, which I don't know where it came from anyway, um, Spear and McKay's suit that I have is made out of super 130s wool from Guabello, which even though it is of a lower quality compared to some other mills, it is still better than the no name wool that you can get out there. The super numbers right now, let me tell you everyone, they're not of that much importance un unless you really care about just how fine the wool is. Something I forgot to mention with my with my Charles Tirrett suit here that I'll be talking about um, with in, alongside my Spear and McKay suit is the lapel width. Um, my men's warehouse suits didn't have exactly very wide lapels. They would probably, they were probably just a half inch shorter than you see the lapels here. Um, my lapels here on my Charles Tirrett suit are a little more proportional to my body. It cuts about, it cuts right around halfway through the chest to the shoulder, which I find is much better for someone who's who has somewhat broader shoulders than others. And kind of going into my uh, Spear and McKay suit, being that it's a double-breasted, of course, it's going to have peak lapels, which are, of course, wider than most notch lapels like you can see here. Those peak lapels, of course, are four and a half, four, or excuse me, not four and a half, four inches out, if not four and a half, and, and of course, they peak up to the shoulders. And of course, it is my first double-breasted suit, which I, I honestly thought it was going to be gaudy, but you know what? After, after really trying it out, it was probably one of my best purchases ever. Talking about the armholes, the armholes, in my opinion, on that suit are just right. Meaning, meaning they're they're high enough where where the suit's not gonna go creeping up and and just kind of go say it go flying. And they're not so high like on my Charles Tirrett suit where it feels like they're kind of creeping into my armpit, which I don't mind because that that keeps the suit from going flying. But at the same time, if, if, it's, if it's bunched up into my armpit, then it can get a little uncomfortable at times. So for me, the Spear and McKay actually worked the best in terms of armholes. A couple of other things I haven't already mentioned. First thing, the jacket has a Barquetta um, breast pocket, meaning that instead of it being completely straight, like you see here on my Charles Tirrett suit, 
it it's curved. Barchetta in Italian, if, if you're not aware, is a little boat. It has that little shape to it, which is which is which if, if you're looking at the finer details of the suit, it actually looks it actually looks really nice compared to a straight breast pocket. To top it off, my Spear and McKay suit is the first suit that I have that has side tabs, side adjusters, however you want to describe it. Meaning I can adjust the waist as as I need to at will and and I'm not at and I'm not at risk of being either too small or too big in my trousers. Now I'm going to talk about my final thoughts on my on the three suit companies that I've purchased from and this is going to be a little more expansive than me talking about the suits on their own. So the first thing I have to mention is that you should always get your suits tailored. One thing I never did with my men's warehouse suits was get them properly tailored. And with that, I meant I mean that my sleeves I never got readjusted. They were old, they were too long. I was never showing any cuff like I am here on my Charles Tirrett suit or even my my Spear and McKay suit which you can see in some of my professional photos that I had taken over the Labor Day weekend a little over a month ago. Another point I want to bring up and something that I mentioned earlier is that your suit should neither be skin tight nor too loose. A suit that is too loose looks baggy almost and and if it's too baggy it looks like you're in a potato sack. And then if it's too skinny, it's it's going to be pulling at the seams almost. Like imagine a shirt that's already just kind of being pulled apart because because it's already too tight on you. The big thing I want to talk about though is that men's warehouse Get, does get an advantage despite their quality on the fact that you get to try their suits on before you even buy them. That is a big advantage that you don't spend one dime before you even uh, consider getting a suit. Whereas with Charles Tirrett and Spear McKay, you have to at least spend the money in order to get the apparel, in order to realize crap I messed up and I need and I need to get some things either adjusted or or get an entirely new product because the sizing was off. Now granted Charles Tirrett and Spear and McKay again actually have really good programs. Again Charles Tirrett has a six month guarantee which is something again no other company has but Spear and McKay does offer a three month guarantee. You get 90 days in, in order to realize Dang it! I messed up. Excuse, excuse the lighting. I, I'm I'm recording this video on Monday, October 18th, and here here in LA, it's a little. The weather is a little weird, so excuse excuse the uh, lighting conditions if they wind up changing. But as a last point, I want to mention that all three websites do have some sizing guides. Though I want to point out that Men's Warehouse really doesn't give you a very detailed sizing guide. Um, men's Warehouse only only says, hey, here's how you measure your chest, here's how you can measure for a suit jacket, and then, of, and then of course for trousers just right around your waist. But on Charles Tirrett and Spear and McKay, but definitely Spear and McKay, it's been a, been a minute since I've seen Charles Tirrett. It, they've dropped some of the details on their suit, but nonetheless on both of those websites, they offer a little more details as to how something fits. Like they'll give you the chest measurement, the waist measurement, um, the sleeve lengths, um, and then for the trousers, it'll it'll bring up the waist measurement, how big the waist really is when you uh, purchase a certain measurement, and then it'll mention the thigh, the thigh and the length measurements, which are both important. It's uh, like if if you know how big your legs are, if it's going to fit too tight, that's probably not what you want to get. There's something I learned from Kirby Allison, which I actually took to heart, and it has actually genuinely helped me. It is much better to buy a suit that is that is of a classic fit than a slim fit, um, because you can always tailor a classic fit down, but you can't tailor a slim fit out. Manufactured garments already have small reserves, if not zero reserves, so. So when you so when you tr want to open a garment up and you can't do that, sorry bud. But if if a garment winds up being too big, you can at least manage to shrink it down a little bit. Now I will say, if you want to tailor down a suit in the shoulders, that's going to be a little tougher. 
because, because it's already shaped up a certain way. But you can tailor down the waist if you needed to. And I, wanna, and I wanna really hit home on this whole classic fit versus slim fit point. Slim, slim fit, unless you're a stick thin dude, like I used to be back in my high school days, 6'2", 160 pounds, versus these days where, where I'm at least 180, 185 pounds, and I'm still 6'2". Um, slim fit doesn't, doesn't provide functionality. Um, Raphael Schneider over at Gentleman's Gazette really p makes a good point. Um, in, in that if it doesn't provide functionality, there's, there's zero point in having a slim fit. Like if, if it's too tight for your arms to even come forward, like say, say your restricted screw is just going like, eh, eh, and you can't go any farther, it's pointless to just have a slim fit piece of clothing just because it makes you, it makes you look bigger. The thing, the thing is, is that you still need to have clothing that's functional. This does not stretch unless you get a specific stretch garment. And again, going back to the whole loose fit thing, some, something that looks like, something that makes you look like you're in a potato sack, that is very unflattering. And honestly, I don't know what's worse between a, a suit that's too tight versus a suit that is way too loose. But personally, I'm of the philosophy that a suit that's way too loose is going to be really hard to tailor down because because fact of the matter is is that you can only sh reshape a garment so much before you take away what it was originally built for whereas a slim whereas a suit that's just a little too slim it looks flattering but you could but you could tell it it can eventually bust at the seams at one point or another so thank you all for watching today's video. I hope you enjoyed it. I, if you did, please drop a like. Before we get going, I would like to give a rundown of my outfit. So for my shirt, I am wearing my dad's, and this was formerly my dad's shirt, Joseph Abood uh, green herringbone shirt, which Joseph Abood, you can really only get at a men's warehouse. I'm unaware of where else you could get it, whether it's at a Joseph A. Banks or anything, but I know you can definitely get these from men's warehouse. Of course, as I've as I've stated multiple times in the video, I'm wearing my Charles Tirrett charcoal suit in the two-piece manner versus the three-piece. Although you can see in the B-roll I shared earlier that I wore it as a three-piece, which really does provide good functionality if you wanted to wear either just the waistcoat or as a full three-piece suit. In addition, I am wearing a blue paisley tie by Ralph Lauren. And, and I actually happened to get this off of eBay um, uh, however long ago this past year, and it's actually been a really great tie to wear. Um, of course, it, go, going, going down south a little bit, um, I'm wearing my black Capto Oxfords from Alden. Been loving these ever since I got them last year as well, alongside my burgundy Kirby Ellison so Sovereign grade socks. And speaking of Kirby Allison Sovereign Grade products, I actually have two more that I would like to feature. First one being the burgundy silk pocket square that I have here, and my navy spot braces, which, you know, th these, these have really launched my perspective. Kirby really launched my perspective into menswear just by starting from his shoe shining videos. And I'm very happy to have to have found his channel because this is really going to help me improve my wardrobe. As someone who's 25, this will really prepare me for the future when trying to trying to look like a 25 year old as a 60 year old will never will no longer work. So again, thank you for watching today's video, everyone. If you enjoyed the content, please drop a like and hit the sub subscribe button for more content in the future. And until my next video, I hope you all have a beautiful day. I will see you all in the next video. Take care, everyone.